hands that were doing the best we could according to our individual determinologies. Uh, occasionally, we met as friends, or, you know, on tour. <laughs> But let me tell you, that was probably where we became major enemies too. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like that. Fucking rock and roll is a disgusting concept. <laughs> what we wanted was, was to break away from that and be good fucking fellas with each other. It never happened like that boys and girls. It really didn't. It became so competitive and, and lost in its own fucking bullshit. Yeah. But, hello, punk. All right. Where's that term come from? I'll tell you. Yeah. It wasn't when Eggy was running around. It was uh, uh, Caroline Kuhn put this expression together. And it was a complete insult, right? In Melody Maker, a, a British magazine, she had the audacity to call me king of the punks. And I bothered to find out what that meant. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm John. I ain't no fucker's toy boy. All right? And that was punk. And at the same time, you've got um, reggae running around there, Rastafari and Natty Dread. And Bob Marley's having to deal with Natty Dread. That was a complete insult to him. But he turned it upside down. And that's what we did too. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Fucking side. Down. Absolutely. So, one thing I was wondering, John, John Varvatos, uh, you know, you made this, there's so many different opinions in here, uh, like John's here. Uh, what, what did you learn about punk from, uh, from, from working on this? What did I learn? Not, not asking, not, not Are you, you fucking not, joking? Look, look, look to your left. He's talking to me. I'm, ta <laughs> I'm, ta I'm talking to your pal from your, on the left right there, right behind you. Oi, fella next to you, can you tell him? <laughs> Henry, Henry's here. Henry! Hello, Henry. <laughs> right. We ain't ever met before. No, sir. No, we ain't, have we? All right. You've said silly things, but excellently good things, too. Yes. <laughs> and you call Black Flag a bunch of suburban rich kids, and I we want to tear your ears off. <laughs> it, yes, I did, but I didn't like the fucking music. It was boring and unreadable. Why? Right? You know, bang, 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 bang. It's like, when uh, Sex Pistols came to you, you ain't heard anything that fucking good, and you know it. <laughs> All right? it and you could hear every single word clearly. And those words... You want to rebut? <laughs> ..put me in the Houses of Parliament under the Traitors and Treasons what? Act, right? which at that time carried a fucking death penalty. So don't, you know, don't talk black well, flag, pink flag, <laughs> grey flag. John, no. John in, the, in the interest of fairness, uh, John, uh, Henry, what, what did the Sex Pistols mean to you? <laughs> I remember I saw a picture of young John. He's wearing a Pink Floyd T-shirt. And on top of the Pink Floyd part, Someone had written, I hate. So it yeah, says, I Someone was me, mate. Okay. <laughs> when I saw that and photo... And I borrowed that shirt to the drummer, I'll, too. I'll finish in a second. Just so you know. Um, <laughs> I saw that shirt, and I went, oh. And I never thought about music the same again. Yeah, it was a good idea, It was a great it? idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? It was such a good idea that I ended up uh, having a really good relationship with... Uh, uh, the Pink Floyd guitarist, right? He came up and he went, wow, nobody's ever talked to us like that. <laughs> hey, uh, so, you know, don't yeah. you get it? That's punk, right? <laughs> we don't hate each other. We like open debate. It's, and on that note, uh, Mr. Varvatos, as, as I was asking before, what... Uh, oh, hello. What, <laughs> what with, in the interest of open debate, what, what, what were the things, what were your takeaways from this, this documentary? Well, there's a lot of passion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. A lot of angst. 
And as Vivian used to say, uh, fashion is a passion. I yes. remember. But she stole that terminology, didn't she? This is the trouble. Growing up as a sex pistol, you know, with, with Malcolm and Vivian pretending they were the the geniuses above us all. We're just street kids, right? So they'd use all these fashion as a passion of statements. Oh, fuck off, man. Johnny Rotten tells it like it is, right? Be done with it, all right? No Malcolm, no Vivian, no bullshit, right? If I'm going to, like, say thanks to good songwriters, you know who I, who I'd look at first? Ray Davies and the Kinks. All right? That would be my culture. I Iggy said that in the documentary, too. Uh, Iggy, Iggy gave credit to, to, uh, to Ray Yeah, Davies. but I was lying then. Uh, well, what I was wondering is we could go down the hey, panel here. Loads of money. What, what was no, no, know, I'm not. I'm not let's, joking. Yeah. I love good songwriters. Absolutely. And in the '60s, the animals. So, well, like, what, what I wanted all to, of these fantastic John, things that were precursors. John, I wanted, I wanted to ask everybody. You, you, you said that Ray Davies inspired you. Hen, uh, let's go down. Let's do Henry and Duff and everyone. What was what was the first punk that turned you? What, what turned you on to punk? What was it? Was it a band? Was it a, a song? Okay. Well, Wait, wait, I need you to redirect that question because you're presuming Ray Davies was a punk. Well, Iggy said that Ray Davies was the first thing is he heard Iggy like that. Is Iggy a punk? Let's I really... Iggy's is Iggy Pop a punk? I think so. How much time did he do in jail? H Henry. What, 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 I what, what, what band was the harder band? If you want to get it. <laughs> was, was there a, was there a, a concert Shut up, or a you song? jealous twat. Was there a, a song or a band that, that uh, turned you on to punk? What was, the, what was the moment? There's a guy in my neighborhood named Roberto Burton, and he had his ear to the ground. He always had the cool records. And I was telling him one day at the skate ramp how my... Ted Nugent and Steve Miller records were not addressing my young man anger oh, no. issues. And he said, come to my house, I'm a doctor. And he gave me the Sex Pistols album, the first Clash album, the first Ramones album. He said, return these tomorrow in one piece. And I played them and I went, oh, so that's how it can be. And that was my first indoctrination. And then I saw the Clash play, Feb 15, 1979, with Bo Diddley opening and standing in, right in front of them. That was a transformative experience. Wow. Having seen Led Zeppelin like the year before. So. <laughs> Amazing. What about you, Duff? What, what, what got you into punk? Uh, it, was, it was the same thing. Pistols record. Uh, class first record. Records. We had we had one. We had records. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sent the pistol record. I, I know, man. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I know. Uh, and then this this West Coast thing started to develop. Like in my hometown of Seattle. Yeah. There was the Mentors and the Loot and, and DOA were this band that started a tour. Yeah. And they would come down. And DOA was, became like our fucking. There was only like 50 of us, mm. but it, they were like our kiss. They were everything, yeah. and they were. Uh, they had this list of like clubs to go tour, and they passed this list on. And, and we were all 14 years old, and my first gig ever was opening for fucking Black Flag with Ron Ray singing, uh, and then seeing Dez come in, and then where I, I, I saw that '79 Clash tour before London Calling, uh, uh, people were pogoing, and 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 uh, a, a yellow-coated security guy punched a pogoer in the nose and broke his nose, and Strummer. Stopped the show. Wow, and he good. said, We're, there, There's no barrier between you and I. You know, the, the band and, and the crowd, we're all in this together. And that, that fucking changed everything for me. And I saw when this guy um, came in for the first time in Seattle, new singer, this new guy from fucking DC, SOA, he was, uh, Henry Woo! Rollins. He's going to be the singer. And Des moved to rhythm guitar. And, and I was in the band that actually opened for them that, that night in Seattle. And Henry, I saw him prepare for the show. Like, it was intense. It was fucking real and scary, and, and things were going to happen. And I just watched him the whole day. Like, not getting too close, because yeah. some bullshit might happen. <laughs> and and uh, he might fucking punch me. But anyhow, uh, watching that formation of Black Flag yeah. was uh, another transformative for me. Wow. That sure. Yeah, that's a great one. See, everything he's saying is absolutely excellent. I agree. Right? And I totally 100%. love it. It's, I came from England from a different background, 
right? Mm -hmm. With different bands. And I don't want to come over as arrogant, and neither does this fella. We're <laughs> telling you the history of what influenced us. Yeah. And Oh my God, Marky! Oh, bless every single. Hi, Marky. Oh, hey, Marky, uh, you want to go? How are you? Yeah, Marky, right? Woo! Well, I just want to say that in 1975-74 at CBGB's and of course in Detroit, that's when punk started. So if it wasn't for that first Ramones album, punk would not have been solidified. And that was in CBGB's, along with Blondie, the Heartbreakers, and yeah. before that, the New York Dolls. And then the Ramones went to England, and they started their punk scene. And then the rest is history. And I'm not going to argue about anything. Thank God. <laughs> thank God we got the music. So yes. And that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter where it comes from, L.A., New York, England, well, this is the best music that was ever out there, and it still is, and I just wanna, I just wanna say one thing. It has nothing to do with what was going on over here on the screen. Donald Trump, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But, um, you know, I mean, the first Pistols album kicked ass. The first Ramones album kicked ass. The first Blondie album kicked ass. The Heartbreakers kicked ass. The Clash. So there was something. Why do you think politics matter? Something, something for Is there everybody. anything in the Ramones that was remotely political? No, we were a fun band. Right we were now. a fun band. We wanted really? people to have you fun. Know, fun. So the thing is so that why, why there's something for everybody, for and that's what's important. You know, you know, was, really? Every band was different. Every band had some to say and some to offer. I love my world, right? That's it. And the one thing I've always known is, and you've always known this about me, don't fucking trust a politician. And if there's anything well, that's what worse I just said, than a fuck politician, Trump. it is a businessman. <laughs> Uh, I got I have another question for let's hear, let's hear a girl talk. Let's hear Come on. I cannot speak. America. I cannot speak. Janita. Yes. Oh, would Iggy, you, you did me, turn up. Would you please tell Who? me how you got into punk? You are Iggy. Yep. I'll take it. Danita, uh, I'll take it. You've had uh, an electrolysis. Um, I just want to say that I came to. Uh, I, I knew about the Ramones and the Sex Pistols before I knew about Iggy and the MC5. So, like, as a teenager, those were the two bands that, like, were my youth quake, earthquake, and... Oh, my God, I've just realized... And it was amazing, and hang on, Tiger. <laughs> Take it easy, Tiger. Let the broad speak for a second. Yeah. Okay, so... I want you to know I'm a married man. What... <laughs> What was cool when I discovered these bands was like, there was such horrible, horrible music on the radio. It was god awful. It was the 70s, the mid, mid late 70s, and it was also boring and like over 30s music. It was just terrible. And then when I heard the Ramones, I was like, oh my god, this is like for teenagers. Oh, it's speaking to me. It's teenage. It's fun. I want to dance to it. And then when I heard the Sex Pistols, I was like, I am fucking terrified of this band, and I love it. So you know, it was like the Sex Pistols and X-Ray Specs, they had such stuff to say. And the Ramones and Blondie and the B-52s, let's not yeah. forget them. Hey. And, you know, that was like super fun and youth. So that's what my take on it. That's fucking fantastic. Yeah, you know, uh, that in, is in, actually... In Tom, you know, that there is, were, there listen, were other bands wait, whoa. that, that had is exactly punk elements. dead right. Like that love. you have to understand. Remember the band in love the time of seven and punk, seven is? We seven had and seven variables. Is. Talk, talk, music machine. Seven and Seven is by Arthur Lee. Yeah. Those, band, th those songs 
were definitely the precursor to all this stuff. You know, and in my opinion, of course, again, oh. the Kinks, all day and all the night. You really got me, and and that heavy guitar sound, and that's that was punk to me. And every band had at least one or two songs in the '60s that had a punk element to it. Nowadays, even the Ramones did it. Even the uh, the Pistols did it. They did '60s covers of so what? of songs. And because they had great, great hits, they had good stuff then. Fuck so we Ramones it up, and we did. Do you want to dance? Shut up. Let's I dance. Didn't cover and that nothing. stepping stone, Fuck stepping you stone, rubbish. stepping stone. Don't talk rubbish. Stepping stone. You play. You did stepping stone. I need stone. no cover of nothing. Stepping stone. Yeah. And turned it up. Okay. Down All right. No, it's great. Down. Okay. Don't argue with me. What? I'm not the enemy. Okay. So punk. Jesus you weren't even in the fucking band. Unbelievable. Punk. You're a no. Johnny come lately. Yeah, okay. No, you're a Johnny come lately. Hey, where'd you get that way? Hey, if it wasn't for the fucking Ramones, you'd be nowhere. You'd be fucking doing fish and chips somewhere. Said the group. <laughs> Listen, uh, I love the Ramones. Yeah, you love the Ramones. But I love okay. status quo more. Uh, good for you. <laughs> I, I, I believe you. I, I, have, a qu I have a question over I here. I believe for, you. For Danita. I have a question for Danita. Uh, All right. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. In the, in the, in the dock, there, there was, there was uh, Joan uh, Jett The problem with this runner, agenda runner. is that he's oh, propagating, I have a question and he's either. not even an original Ramon, but he's propagating well, well, this but I, idea. But I did the Blank the, Generation the album with Richard Hell, and, and, and you took his image, and all you guys took Richard Hell's image. That's all you did. The, the thing? Yeah, and you're still covering you're, your you're fucking You're talking, that's all you fucking did. Did was take Richard oh, Hell's no, image. They anymore. did the Blank all Generation right. album, right. and that's all, all right. you did. All right. That's all, all right. you let's did. Let's and let's Sid Vicious was the star. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. He was, he was the star. Of the band. He was the star. He was the best. For awesome he was fake great. idiots like He you. was great. Enjoy your he drugs. Ass. Fucking have a happy he life. Kicked ass. So, so to you conclude, play, and Glenn you know, Matlock wrote all the songs, I, too. Okay. Mark, know, there Mark, you go. Mark, John, Where's Mark, Glenn Matt. Matlock? Let's, uh, let's end this Jerry Springer episode for a Where's second. Where's Glenn here. Matlock? Come on. And what I want to propagate here so you all right. completely understand, <laughs> punk music for me was positive, proof positive that we could change our lives by music, meaning what we said, attack the political systems. This daft cunt, how hey, come you, wait, wait, is in the fucking you drugs. Fuck hey, you, John, you, John, John, you talk John. the talk, but you didn't do the walk. All right. Just oh. like the MC5. Let's take a pause. Hello, Johnny Roy hey, never hey. did the walk. He, he didn't, he did the, he uh, just talked. He didn't do the a, walk. He was down out. the street protesting <laughs> like the MC5. Well, look at you. That's you it, look like right? heavy metal fucking uh, Whatever the fuck, right. okay? A, Sit the fuck pause. down. This is add. so punk rock, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> This is fucking punk. You want it? You right got here. it. <laughs> Unpolished, oh, no, unrehearsed, oh, off Dan the fucking rails. Denise, yeah. That's Denita, it. I wanted to ask you, just for this, in, the, in the interest of wrapping up, what's, what gives you... What gives me the what, right to be up here? What gives you hope for punk? What, what punk has been inspiring you? Uh, Let's see what, what gives me hope for punk is that people still get really pissed off about stuff, <laughs> and uh, and yet people can still laugh yeah. at people getting, you know, upset, uh, and and it's it's a good time. I'm sorry that it's all ended up in a Absolutely. fiasco, but hello, that's what punk music is. All right, I'm gonna like, let's ask the next one. Duff. What, what gives you hope for <laughs> You instigated it! Are there any bands right now that are really inspiring you that are punk? Like, what, what gives you hope for punk stuff? <laughs> what, what, what's that? What, what punk... <laughs> What punk music is inspiring you right now, Duff? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm lucky to have two daughters, 21 and 18, who turned me on to whatever the fuck is new. 
Uh, I love the horrors. I love my daughter's band, the Pink, Pink Slips. Uh, death grips. Um, there's a lot of energy. I go to these fucking shows in in, uh, in Echo Park in downtown, and and I got to go see an old cluster last Saturday. Walter Lure play Heartbreaker shows. It was fucking great. Um, but uh, you know, there's a whole new youth movement who uh, are doing. I think Johnny was alluding to, and the things that I experienced watching Henry and watching all my heroes and, and seeing Iggy as a fucking young kid. Um, and, and the pistols were so fucking exotic, talking about, the songs were about political things. I had no idea what, you know, who the queen was or any of that shit, but it opened me up to all of that stuff, mm -hmm. to, to look into it. And so did Stiff Little Fingers. When my mom came into the bedroom, her, uh, I was listening to Stiff Little Fingers and, and Suspect Device, and, and, and uh, she started crying. And we're an Irish family, and she, these boys are going through the troubles, and a, a Suspect Device is a, is a bomb. Yeah. And um, yeah. anyhow, so uh, there's, a, uh, there's a great... In Los Angeles and in Seattle, there's great young punk rock, or, or whatever. Somebody alluded to on the on the d documentary. I think it was Henry. Like they, did, there's no, it's not genre specific. It's just a bunch of bands with a bunch of different ideas, dropping hip hop beats or not, or, or just playing fucking straight up punk rock, or writing great songs. And and I get to see it through my daughter's. You know, I get to go to these shows. That's great. Hey, Henry, Henry, is, Henry, is there he's any really punk that's really good inspiring this you right now? Uh, there's, there's a the lot of... The point really being, the point being how different we all are. Absolutely. And you must not forget that, that we have never, ourselves as bands, viewed each other in competition. This is something the press created for us. <laughs> Right. Come on, see here, baby. I haven't got a job. Well, let, let's let's end with my this. job Henry. is to educate you. Let, let let's end with. <laughs> I can't let, hear let's, you. Stop let's, shouting let's just, like let's, a fucking Marxist. Let's just. Will let you Henry. come in the middle and talk? <laughs> let's let Henry. <laughs> That's not how John. debate is. John, stop it. Yeah. You know I love your tits. All right. oh. Hen Henry, what? Oh, come on. Come on, John. Do you want to add? Yeah, if, I, if, that I, was if, a, if I can have like just 20 seconds. Um, what, one of the best things that's happening in punk rock right now is you have a lot of women in bands. And uh, a lot of bands in Australia that are worth checking out. There's a great band called BB and the Blips and uh, a band called the Cable Ties. And they have fantastic, angry women singers. And uh, there's a, a great Australian metal band called High Tension. And I believe the singer is by way of Taipei or Singapore ends up in Australia or maybe she was born there. They are fantastically powerful. And to hear this woman like rip her vocal cords out per song, go online. You can listen to High Tension right now. They're fantastic. So there's a lot of uh, women coming to the front. There's a great band in LA. You see them whenever you can. They're called C the CIA. And that would be uh, Danae Siegel on vocals and she's fantastic. So a lot of good punk rock is happening. Great. And lastly, just Mr. Varvados. Uh, what gives what gives you hope for punk after doing this coming out of this is there all this crazy shit it never ends that's what's exciting you know <laughs> never gonna end I want all right. you all understand uh, the love of my life Nora me she has Alzheimer's <laughs> no not me no no all right. my Nora has Alzheimer's so when she rings I have to answer all right Can you well, understand that with me yes and secondly and most importantly with which Henry was making a point of about early punk. My granddaughter was the lead singer of the Slips. <laughs> and don't you ever forget that band. That's the best all-time all-girl band. So don't give me no shit. All right, well, we're going to end there. Thank you all so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Punk will be on Epics March 11th. It's been a, it's been a trip.